Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is just uh, sh showing you how to, you can put a string into the NVS uh, memory of the ESP32 and basically, and so that when you put this string in, if you turn the ESP32 off or reset it and then turn it back on, then that string will still be in the NVS memory. So it's a good way of like holding configuration character sorry configuration you know information etc that you might want to store um in order so that you, you can uh when the machine turns on it can be customized to in a sort of like to particular environments right so uh, what i've done is this is the code that i've um all, and all, all i've basically all i've done is i've used the um code which is from the esp idf uh, tree uh, master sorry e examples so when you go into their examples you be, you go into I think, yeah it's in storage and actually you can see the path of it here um right, let me just get out of this or oh, actually well yeah uh well what i've done is i've copied it into a separate um place but i can show you where the path of it is it's um Right, so then it's in examples, and then it's in storage, and then it's in NV, it's NVS, yeah, and then you've got two, there's either a blob or value, so the one I've chosen is, is the value. So if you go into the value, and what they suggest is that you should always make a copy of, of that project, and that's what I've done here. And so what I'm just going to do is, uh, at the moment, it's turned off. Uh, as you can see, by that's why all this sort of rubbish is here, because when you turn it off, it messes up the serial. So I'm just going to power it on, because what I've done is I've added a switch to it, uh, so that it's easier for me to reset it. So when I turn it on, yeah, you see that what, what you find has happened is that it will there'll be a string there, and then you have the restart counter. So I'm just going to power it off. Yeah, so, that, so it just crashes out again. And so just to show you what's happening, when the chip boots up, it then opens the NVS, it reads the string from NVS, and um, so this, well, this buffer, actually, I should change that. I forgot to put a, a new line there. So... Um, this is the initial buffer, and then all of these texts here uh, are added on later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that actually happening. Uh, and what I've also done is that when the text size gets to over, I think I did it at 960, then I've set it to restart the ESP rather than overwrite, sorry, rather than overflowing the buffer. Because of course, if I over, if I put too much into this buffer, which is only a thousand characters. I get a buffer overflow, so I've restricted it so the ESP restarts just before it reaches that um, overflow. And so then after it reboots, it's got the same string. So now, of course, you might think that okay, all I did was just type, you know, paste that string into the into the code and just you know put it into the flash. But what I'm going to do is show you actually how that string was built up. So what I'm going to do now is just put it into Put into programming mode, and then right. So what I'm going to do? So just got to power cycle it. Right. So it's back on. So now it's waiting for download. So now what I have to do is, in order to get rid of the string that's in flash, if I just try to flash the code, then the old value will still be there. So what I have to do is to quit out of this and then the sequence that you used in order to flash, clear the NVS and then um, sort of upload the code back to it is, so it's make and it's erase. Or actually, just think so I don't type it wrong, I'll just um, find the previous one. Yeah, that's it. So it's make erase flash. Then I want to flash it. 
and then I want to run the monitor. The reason you do all this in one go is so that it doesn't run the compiler three times, which is a little bit annoying, but that's how it goes. Um, oh yeah, and I was going to change the code so that so what I'm going to do is this restart it takes a bit long, so I'm going to make this one five seconds as well. Uh, you, you see what I mean, actually, I'll make it four just so you can see the difference. Because you think it's the other one, which is on five seconds. Let me make this one six. So you can, so it's obvious the difference between the restarts when you see them. And then what it was, buffer. Alright, so anyway, let's get on with this. So now if I just save that. And then we just run the procedure. Do minus J4 in case it, just to speed up the make. Right, so so now uh, so it's going to run the uh, make, and the first thing it's going to do is erase flash. What? Right. Yeah. So so it's look erasing. Yeah. So the erasing's finished, even though it says it may take a while. So it just took seven seconds. No, I think it needs to reset. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now so that's finished flashing. And so now it's waiting so so I have to take it out of programming mode and just reset it. So you get the rubbish. And then now watch carefully when it starts you, you'll see what it's actually doing. So you see the first time so the value's not initialized. So it restarts. Now the text is in the yeah. See, so as you notice, where it says buffer equals, so here is a load of text. You notice that it's gradually getting longer. And notice where it says buffer size. See, the buffer is two twenty now. So what's happening is the buff the buffer is getting put into the MVS, and it's being stored. And then the amount of characters in the buffer is increasing. So as you can see, the text is getting longer and longer. And so what I've set it for, is, this is why I did the countdown as, um, as five seconds. Well, actually, it was, no, no, actually, it was six seconds, didn't I? Yeah, see, so, so it's up to 5.15. Six oh five, so so it's not going to take too much longer. Yeah, see, it's up to seven one five. So remember, nine one thousand is the limit. Sorry, nine nine forty. I think I set the limit as. Yeah, so it's about thirty. So it's about fifty five. Yeah, so it's eight eighty. So the next one should be nine thirty, yeah, nine three five. But then it will, the next one it will stop. Yeah. So as you can see, it says text is too large, so it's restarting the ESP thirty two. Right. So as you see, each time it restarts, the buffer is always nine ninety characters. So what's happening is so that I don't get a buffer overflow. I've set it to not write any more text when it gets to, to um to that size. And so now of course what we next have to do is power it off. And so as you see you get the rubbish there when I turn it off. So now I just turn it back on. And you see it's it's in buffer too large already. Yeah, see, so now, um, I won't, basically, it will always say this, that it's, um, it's not going to write any more to it because of the size, because after each restart, the, the file is still there in the NV, sorry, the information is still there in the MVS. And I suppose what I should have done is I should have restarted it halfway when it was, uh, going up. Um, but actually, I can quickly demonstrate that, so. 
just crashing out. And so what what you can do is when you're in the um yeah see it doesn't allow me to to erase from um all right so so if I just exit this so what I'm do is so you rate flash and then just monitor. So you see raising it again. And so now um well actually I think I might have made a mistake, we will soon find out. Yeah, okay, so we're trying to load uh, um well the, the rom is trying to load uh, an empty flash which of course is never going to work so what we can do rather than so i don't even have to exit the monitor because what i can do is i can i do control t and then control h then i can build and flash the project which is con so it's control t f and so it's actually it's going to flash the uh project just need to turn it off and back on. Well, sorry, it's off at the moment, so I'll turn it on. Right, so, so, and you see, I'm still in the monitor, which is a good thing about using the ESP IDF. And so, I can just send a command to the monitor and it will actually reflash the chip. So, you notice one minute I had a dead chip, and now I've managed to flash it while still in the monitor. So now it's actually, it's still in the monitor now. So if I take it out of programming, programming mode and then power cycle it and turn it back on. Yeah. And you see now it started from the beginning again. And so you notice it's up to, I'm not going to go all the way through this. I just want to demonstrate the fact that it keeps the value. So you see it says the buffer is, well, they do. All right. So it's 165. So now power cycle it because so it gives you the old brown out. And so now if I turn it back on, so remember it's 165 in buffer, so we turn it back on. And now it's 220. Um because what happened is it the buffer yeah, that's right, it read it on load, it read it and then read it into the buffer and added the extra. So I should really put the buffer before. I send the text. I don't know. Well, well, I don't know. So if you power it again, so you see it says it's 440 characters, and it adds the text, which is 55, I think. So now it should be 490 something or 500. And I'll turn it back on. Yeah, it sees 495, so it adds 55. And so, yeah, so basically that's it. So just give it a nice crash there. And so that's, so if anyone's interested, that's basically, that's how you can store, um, text into the NVS flash of uh, ESP32. And what I did is the original, um, example used the int, but because of something that I'm trying to do, uh, well, it's, I don't actually need it to be text, but I realized that the example didn't have text. And of course, you more want to store text than you do want to store ints. And of course, you'll see that this is also what I want to do with that. There's web page, the jQuery web pages that I was building. So once I get that code working, then I'll just do a quick demonstration of it. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.